Welcome to the quiz show that demands nothing less than perfection. Behind this screen, the four contestants will be hoping their knowledge is flawless because one single mistake could give the game away. This is perfection. Hello and welcome to Perfection, the quiz show where only perfect play is good enough. Behind me are the contestants. We call them the usual suspects. They're in our isolation room. In a moment, we'll find out which one of them has been randomly selected to join me here to play Perfection. They will then face a series of true or false statements. For example, if I said rickets can be caused by a lack of vitamin D, would you say that's true or false? Well, if you'd said true, I can tell you you'd be right. Answering true or false might seem easy, but if the contestant gets a single answer wrong, their opponents, the usual suspects, will be allowed into the game to capitalise on their mistakes. So, you know how the game works. Let's meet the usual suspects. Hiya, my name's Tony. I'm from Workerton in Cumbria. I'm a pulp mill operator, and this is my first game. Hi, my name's Luke. I'm from Nottingham. I'm a bartender, and this is my first game. Hi, I'm Tanya. I'm from Edgware. I'm a primary school teacher, and this is my third game. Hi, my name is Sarah. I'm from Leicester. I'm a mental health support worker, and this is my fifth game. Best of luck to you all as we now find out which one of you has been randomly picked to play perfection. <laughs> Tony, it's you. Please come down and join me. <laughs> Tony, welcome to the show. It's now you versus the usual suspects. They were your teammates. They're now your enemies. Their job is to stop you from winning the prize fund because your failure will mean the prize money rolls over to the next game where one of them could be playing for a bigger total. Now, every game on Perfection is worth £1,000. Here's the great news for you, and it is really good news. Nobody's won the last 12 games, so the prize fund currently stands at £13,000. Be nice. Be nice. Be nice. So, what are you going to spend it on? I like to go on holiday. Uh, I like to take my kids away and be good. And uh... You know, there's all you always need money for something, so you know, I'm it's sure we go. It's interesting actually, because most people come. I mean, most people have got credit card debts and various other things as well. But nobody, when I ask them, says, "Yeah, I'm going to pay off a credit card." They all go, "I'm going on holiday or something." I, I may <laughs> put a little bit towards that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's kind of nice to take some of the debts away, isn't it? All right, look, here's how the game works. You'll play three rounds and then a final. Every round that you achieve, perfection will make the final easier for you. However, if your performance is anything less than perfect, the usual suspects here will have a chance to step in and steal the round, making the final much harder. For you. Usual suspects, we're going to switch you off for now so you can't see or hear anything. Each round consists of four true or false statements. You'll be answering against the clock. You'll only have 45 seconds, and once you've given an answer, your first answer, it will be locked in. Are you ready? Yep, I'm ready. Then let's play perfection. <laughs> round one, your 45 seconds starts now. The real name of Batman's sidekick Robin is Jimmy Olsen. False. False. The singer Taylor Swift was born in the 1980s. False. False. Seattle is nicknamed the Emerald City. False. False. And finally... In Parliament, Black Rod is an unwaged position. True. True. And with that, you've answered all four statements. How did that feel? Not sure now. It's amazing how much goes on in your head in such a short space of time when you're up against it, isn't it? All right, before we reveal exactly how well you've done, it's time to bring back the usual suspects. Don't forget they'll be able to hear you. So here are the four statements, and next to them are Tony's answers. So uh, let's start with Sarah. How's he done? The only one I might question is A. I have heard of that name before, so I do question that. Tanya, what do you make of these answers? I think Tanya's got perfection on this round. Luke, can you see anything wrong? Um, I'm not sure about D, but um, other than that, I think he might have perfection, Nick. Well, a bit of a vote of confidence from the usual suspects there. Have you achieved perfection? Let's find out how many are correct. Hmm? In actual fact, only one out of four. <laughs> the usual suspects can steal the round. You need to find three answers to change usual suspects, but which three? A is um, false, because Jimmy Olsen is the photographer from Spider-Man. Right, so we definitely know that's, that's false. That's definitely false. Well, if you're that confident. <laughs> yeah. And we're going to change B, C and D, yeah? Yeah. OK, Nick, we'd like to change B from false to true. B changes from false to true. C from false to true. C from false to true. And D, true to false. And D from true to false, leaving A as answered by Tony. All right, use your suspects. Let's find out what the correct answers are. 
The real name of Batman's sidekick, Robin, is Jimmy Olsen. Is that true or false? It is false. Very well done. He was a friend of Superman, not Spider-Man. He was a friend of Superman. Yeah. And Robin, by the way, the real name was Dick Grayson. Dick Grayson, that's it. There you go. The singer Taylor Swift was born in the 1980s. True or false? True, 1989. <laughs> In actual fact, so only just in the 80s. Seattle is nicknamed the Emerald City, true or false? Yes, it is. In Parliament, Black Rod is an unwaged position. It is, of course, false. Congratulations, usual suspects. You have achieved perfection. <laughs> the salary was £82,900 a year if you wanted to be Black Rod. I'm not sure what qualifications you have to have. In 2010, it was that much. OK. Let's see the final board. It's only these six blank spaces need to be filled with subject categories. Here are your final round categories. Starting with Capote, running through honours, baseball and on to only falls, uh, with many more in between. Now, if you'd have won that round, you'd have the opportunity of adding two categories of your choice to the board. But because the usual suspects stole the round from you, they choose the two categories, hoping to make the final harder for you. So, choose away. I'm thinking musical slang. It's, it's quite an obscure... Subject really, I don't think Tony would know much about that. Happy to go with that? Yeah, yeah, I think it's yeah. a good subject. Yeah. Okay, uh, musical slang, please. Musical slang goes into the final and. What about zombies? I was just thinking <laughs> zombies, it looks like a quite an interesting topic. Yeah, yeah. okay, could go either way. So, yeah, we'll go with zombies, please, Nick. And zombies makes it into the final. Well done, usual suspects, you've won the first round. Time to switch you off, and we'll see you in round two. Musical slang is a kind of weird subject category, isn't mm. it? I don't really know where that would go. Like, it might be okay. Yeah, zombies. Could be the old films. Yeah. Could be uh, something like that. All right, uh, take a look at the list. Which will be the first two that you choose when you get the opportunity? Mona Lisa, or maybe Only Fools, or perhaps Asia. And ones that you really don't want on that list. Maybe Paxman, perhaps baseball. Paxman and baseball. All right. Well, the way to avoid them is to achieve perfection yourself and choose your own category. So, if you're ready to play on, okay. Let's play round two. Your 45 seconds starts now. Welsh rugby player JPR Williams played at fullback. True. True. Timpani is another name for the bongo drums. I know it's to do with drums. Um, false. False. ABBA were originally called FABBA. False. False. And finally, the atlas bone is in the wrist. I've never heard of that. Um... No, I don't think you know. False. False. And with that, you've answered all four statements. Uh, that felt like a more confident round to me. Yeah, that seemed more familiar. I, I thought the last ball was good, but uh, it didn't really work that well for me, so we'll see how it goes, but, uh, yeah. Before we reveal how well you've done, it's time to bring back the usual suspects. So here are the four statements, and next to them are Tony's answers. Let's go from Tony to Tanya. Uh, how's he done? I'm not sure of B and D. I'm sure I've heard of the Atlas Bone, but it's whether it's in the wrist or not. Luke? Uh, if I'm honest, I'm really not sure at all. I'm not confident on any of those answers. That is brutally honest of you, Luke. Thanks very much. <laughs> Sarah? I think he may have done OK. Um, D, I agree with Tanya, it's hard to know whether the Atlas Bone is in the wrist or not. OK. Uh, it's only the moment of truth. Let's find out how many are correct. <laughs> Congratulations, Tony. You have achieved perfection. I think you were disappointed after the first round. Oh, but that was you... about one, yeah. Yeah, all the nerves are gone now, haven't they? Let's go through them then. Uh, Welsh rugby player JPR Williams played at fullback. You said it was true, and of course it is true. <laughs> Timpani is another name for the bongo drums. True or false? False. In actual fact, it's the kettle drums and not the bongo drums. ABBA were originally called Faber. True or false? Yeah, that's false. Um, they actually had several other names before they became ABBA, but Faber wasn't one of them. And the atlas bone is in the wrist, true or false? Yeah, it's false. In actual fact, it's the very top bone in the neck that holds up your head. So, let's see the final board. The usual suspects having won round one got to choose the first two, but because you've won round two, you get to choose the second two. So what would you like? Only fools. Only fools goes in and... Asia. Asia. The usual suspects, so uh, you didn't really get a chance there, did you? Nonetheless, we'll see you in round three. Cheerio. Ready to play on? Yeah. Let's play round three. 
Your 45 seconds starts now. Rattlesnakes swallow stones to create their rattle. False. False. Ronnie Corbett appeared in Doctor No. Oh, my word. Um... False. False. Stoke City won the FA Cup four times in the 1990s. False. False. And finally, all of Cornwall is designated as a national park. True. True. Well, light of time to spare. You've answered all four, and very confidently, it seemed to me. No, it didn't seem too bad. Yeah? Before we find out, let's have a chat with the usual suspects. So, once again, here are the four statements, and next to them are Tony's answers. Luke, what do you think of those answers? I think D is um, false. I, I'm pretty sure that Cornwall won't entirely be a national park. Tanya, what do you think? Yeah, I agree with Luke. I think D's false. And Sarah? And I agree with the two, and I also think it's false. Interesting. All right, Tony, let's find out how many are correct. <laughs> Three out of four, not perfection, and that means the usual suspects have a chance to come in and steal the round. But don't worry, only if they can identify the one that they agree on. That should be easy enough. <laughs> <laughs> I think we pretty much spelt it out to you, Nick. So, uh, yeah, we'll go with D uh, from true to false, please. Yeah. Uh, no great shock there, really. Uh, D changes from true to false, leaving A, B and C as answered by Tony. All right, usual suspects. Let's find out what the correct answers are. Rattlesnakes swallow stones to create their rattle. True or false? Uh, yeah, false. In actual fact, the rattle is made by bits of dried-up skin from previous sheddings of their skin that they rattle. Nice, huh? Ronnie Corbett appeared in Doctor No. True or false? False. Although he did appear in a spoof version of the 1967 Casino Royale. Stoke City won the FA Cup four times in the 1990s. True or false? Yeah, false. Uh, they didn't. In fact, they've never won the FA Cup. And all of Cornwall is designated as a national park. True or false? Yes, of course it's false. Congratulations, usual suspects. You have achieved perfection. <laughs> Tony, the usual suspects have succeeded where you failed and they've stolen the round. Let's see the final board. It's an even Stephen board at the moment, with two categories having been chosen by each side. But it falls to you, usual suspects, to choose the last two because you won that last round. I was thinking maybe baseball because I'm not sure if you'd be into as many of the American sports. True. Yeah, there's a lot there. Yeah, I'm yeah. well, we're happy with that. Baseball, please, Nick. Baseball goes in and one more. Okay. Paxman, that does stand out to me as well. Do you think you would watch Newsnight? <laughs> Hard to know, isn't it? But, yeah, we'll go with Paxman, please, Nick. Paxman goes into the final. We now know our six final categories. They are musical slang, zombies, only fools, Asia, baseball and Paxman. OK, guys, very well played. Time to switch you off for the final time. Well, you didn't want Paxman, but baseball? Not sure. It depends which question comes up for that. Yeah, fair enough. All right, Tony, for £13,000, it's time to play the final. Tony, this is the all-important final. If you can achieve perfection, you could be leaving with a prize fund of £13,000. If you fail, you'll be leaving with nothing, which would be great news for the usual suspects, as one of them could be playing for a rollover of £14,000 on the next game. Let's play the final round. <laughs> Tony, here are your final six categories. You must answer all six statements correctly if you want to win the £13,000. Think carefully. There's no time limit. But once you've given an answer, your first answer, it's locked in. You ready? Let's reveal your first statement. Musical slang. Axe is another name for a guitar. Oh, well, I haven't never heard of that, so... Um, I'll say true. True. Zombies. In the film World War Z, Brad Pitt plays Zeke. He's played a lot of films. I'll go for true. True. Only Fools. Uncle Albert was played by Buster Crab. Uh, no, that's false, because I think it was Buster Mirrorfield. False. Asia. Darjeeling is a place in India. No, it's a nice cup of your Darjeeling. That's uh, it's placed in India. Or is that just what a name we made up for the tea? I'll say true. True. Baseball. The World Series takes place every two years. Mm hmm good question. Uh, I think that plays every, maybe, maybe even every year. No, I'll say false. False. And finally, Paxman. 
Jeremy Paxman was born in 1940. That'll make him 74. You can never be that old. False. False. And with that, all six statements are answered and locked in. Remember, if there's one single mistake, you leave with nothing. Which ones are you worried about? I'm not sure about E. Um, I'm sure about C. Um, and I, I've never heard of, of, of the axes and other name for a guitar. And there again, you know, it could be true, it could be false. So there's, there's one or two there I'm not sure about. All right, let's bring back the usual suspects and see what they have to say. Usual suspects, you can now see the final six statements and next to them are Tony's answers. Tony, your answers are now locked in and you can't change them by yourself. But if you think you may have made a mistake, you can unlock the board with the help of the usual suspects. This will, however, come at a cost. Tony, who would you like to hear from first? Sarah, what do you, what do you think? I do believe you have a couple wrong. Uh, unfortunately, I don't feel qualified enough to help you out with those, so um, this time I'm going to um, not help you, I'm afraid. So Sarah's counted herself out. Okay. Luke, what do you think? Um, I'm sure you've got one wrong, Tony. I would be willing to come down, but it would be for £10,000 at least. Right, so, well, there's an offer from Luke to get you started there. Do you want to carry on negotiating there? I'll or you... uh, speak to Tanya. OK. Hi, Tony. Hiya. Yeah, you have got one wrong. Um, I'm not 100% certain on one of them, and the rest I'm confident of. So, what's your best offer? Well, we're paying for 13,000. Um, would you be happy for 5,000? I'd need more than that, I'm afraid, Tony. How much are you wanting? Uh, about seven. OK, 7,000. Come down. 7,000, Tanya, happy to accept that? OK. I am indeed, for yes. 7,000 pounds of the 13,000 pounds, Tanya, please come down and join us. OK, Tony, you've asked Tanya for help. If you achieve perfection, it will cost you £7,000 of your potential price oh, under £13,000. Uh, Tanya, you, you've now forfeited your chance to play in the next game. This is your only shot of winning perfection. Tanya, a little bit more about you. You're a big um, uh, fan of whale watching. You've sort of seen them all around uh, over the I've world. I've been so lucky. I've been to New Zealand, I've been to Hawaii, and if we win the money, hopefully off to Alaska as well. Because um, they all gather up there in Alaska, don't yeah, they? Yeah, you get the orcas up there. I've seen humpbacks, but I haven't seen the killer whales yet. All right, look, all six answers are now unlocked. Tanya, which answers do you want Tony to change? B. Three. B. Yeah. I've seen my war Z a couple of times, and I'm sure it's not there. Zeke. I'm sure it's the name isn't Zeke. So you think all the rest are OK? I'm not sure of A. Well, That's I, the only I, one I wasn't sure of. Well, I, I, I didn't know. That's one I was a bit worried about because I hadn't heard that expression before. So what do you think, then? Do you think true or false? I actually think it's false. You think it's false? Yeah. So that, that's the only one I wasn't sure of. Well, uh, Tony, remember, it's still your decision. You don't have to listen to Tanya. However, the board is now unlocked, so you can change all, any, some or none of your answers. Well, we're sort of thinking about uh, the Bs, definitely we're going to change yeah. true to false. B changes from true to false. I still do think A is false. So we, tra we change A from true to false, please. True and then change. the rest will leave as they are. Yeah. A from true to false. Leaving C to F as originally answered by Tony. There they go. Right, your answers are now locked in. £13,000 at stake, £6,000 to Tony, £7,000 to Tanya. Six answers away. Let's find out if you've achieved perfection. Well, A and B are the key ones, aren't they? They're the ones that you've uh, decided to play around with and change. So let's start at the bottom and work towards them, shall we? Uh, and leave them till last. Uh, Jeremy Paxman was born in 1940. Now, Tony, you thought that would make him 74, 75 yeah. or something like that. So you went with false. Is it true or false? Yes, it is false. Very well done. <laughs> One down, uh, <laughs> uh, 1950, in actual fact. Uh, the World Series takes place every two years. You said this was false. Is it true or false? It is false. Very well done. <laughs> it is an annual competition, in actual fact. Darjeeling is a place in India, and you said uh, certainly a, a decent cup of tea from there, Tony. You said true. If this turns green, you're halfway to the cash. Is that true or false? It is true, and you are halfway. Three out of three. Very well played. A oh, nice cup of Your favourite tea from there, wasn't it? Uh, Uncle Albert was played by Buster Crab. Tony, you said it was Buster... Merrifield. So you went for false. Is it true or false? This false. Uh, that was, that was most confident <laughs> was. That's You're confident absolutely one. correct. Yeah. And Buster Crabbe, by the way, played Flash Gordon way back when in the, in the films. So we're down to the last two. Now, here's where we find out whether the, Tanya has done that terrible thing and come and <laughs> taken Tony away from a winning run, which, uh, which has happened in the past, 
or whether indeed, Tony, you needed Tanya to come down to help to even be in with a chance. In the film World War Z, Brad Pitt plays Zeke. You said true, Tony, although you haven't seen the film. No. Tanya has seen the film, so changed it to false. Is it true or false? Oh. <laughs> it is false. Gary Lane, he plays, in actual fact, is his yeah, character. Yeah, so Zeke just didn't ring a bell well at all well on done. that one. Well done. I didn't know. So. Oddly, Zeke is the generic name given to the zombies. They're referred to as Zeke. So there you go. <laughs> um, so the, here we are. The, the truth of the matter is, Tony, that if you hadn't got Tanya to come down, you'd be walking away with no cash at this point. You are, however, still in with a very good chance, having got five out of six, and it's all down to this last one. Axe is another name for a guitar. Tony, you said you thought this was true, although it was just a guess. You'd never yeah, heard the yeah, term before. Heard. Tanya came down and thought it wasn't true, so you changed it to false. We need this to turn red. If it does, you walk away with £13,000. £6,000 for you, Tony, £7,000 for you, Tanya. Is that true or false for £13,000? It's true. Tends to be referred to in, uh, the in sort of heavy rock circles, that, like, you know, like, as the axe. It's kind of a thing that guitarists know and people in heavy rock know, but not necessarily in other areas. Well, usual suspects, great news for you. The prize fund rolls over to the next game, where one of you could be playing for a total of £14,000. <laughs> that was so close. But I'm afraid five out of six just isn't good enough. You didn't achieve perfection. So you go home empty-handed, apart from with our thanks for playing such a great game. Let's hear it for Tony and Tanya, everybody. <laughs> so close, but, you know, not perfection. Time now to meet the next Usual Suspects, hoping to play perfection today. New Usual Suspects, please introduce yourselves. Hi, I'm Shell. I'm from Southend-on-Sea in Essex, and I'm an accountant. Hi, I'm Catherine, and I'm from Durham, and I'm a linguistic student. Welcome to Catherine and Shell. You're a South End on Sea Shell. Yes. <laughs> That's quite good, isn't it? Uh, good. Welcome to you both, and good luck to all of you as we now find out which one of you has been randomly picked to play perfection. <laughs> Shell, it is you. Please come down and join me. <laughs> Shell, welcome to the game. Sorry about the joke about the South End on That's Sea okay. Shell. That was too obvious. <laughs> you know? Yes. <laughs> Let's find out about you. Just got engaged? Yes, yes. Christmas Day. Total oh. surprise. Was it really? Yeah. Oh. Uh, <laughs> yeah, so that was... So, uh, that was tall, good-looking, handsome? Well, I think he is. <laughs> That's all that counts, <laughs> really, isn't it? <laughs> That's the main thing. Yeah. All right, so it's now you versus the usual suspects. They were your teammates, they're now your enemies. And, and it's an interesting thing. You're the second player to come straight in and straight down. Yeah, I know. But, you know, big money at the moment, it is. so and good time to come my down. lucky number. Well, here's the good news. Nobody's won the last 13 games, so the prize fund currently stands at £14,000. <laughs> Uh, it's been handy for a wedding, really. It yeah. would pay for a wedding and pay off a few credit card debts. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right, listen, three rounds of the final to come. Use your suspects. We're going to switch you off for now so you can't see or hear anything. But as soon as Shell makes a mistake, you'll be back in the game. When they're like this, you can talk through your answers without giving away any vital knowledge, OK? OK. Ready to play? Yes. Then let's play perfection. <laughs> Round one, your 45 seconds starts now. Kansas City is a number from the musical Oklahoma. Um, I think that's false. False. The Vatican City's currency is the papal pound. That's correct. That's true. True. The 13 sided shape is known as a triskaidekagon. Yes, I think that's true. True. And finally, a concertina is a kind of musical instrument. That's also true. And true, and with time to spare, you've answered all four. See, that was nervous at all <laughs> at the moment? A little bit nervous? A little bit, yeah. But, you know, you seem to storm through that confidently. Couple of guesses in there. Really? Mm. They don't need to know that? No. <laughs> Before we reveal how you've done, let's have a chat with the usual suspects. So here are the four statements, and next to them are Shell's answers. Sarah, start us off here. A, um, I know, is definitely true, because I've seen uh, the musical before. All right, Luke. I think a concertina is a type of vocalist, not an actual instrument. OK. Catherine, can you see anything wrong with these answers? I'm unsure of a few, but I, I don't think D's right. 
OK. Uh, Shell, the moment of truth. You need to have answered all four statements perfectly to have won the round. Let's find out how many are correct. Okay. Two out of four is not perfection, I'm afraid, and it means the usual suspects have a chance to steal the round if they can identify the two answers that they need to change. OK, guys, actually, I'm very confident, indeed, that it is right. Constantine is a type of squeeze box. You know, like okay. an accordion, it's like a yeah. very small version of that. I think, um, I think the Vatican City's currency is the people band. It does sound right to me, yeah. I'll go with you on that, and I think C could be right. <sighs> but if you're not confident, I'm happy to. Sure. OK, Nick, on that basis, we'd like to change A from false to true. A changes from false to true. And C from true to false, please. And C from true to false, leaving B and D as answered by Shell. All right, usual suspects, let's find out what the correct answers are. Kansas City is a number from the musical Oklahoma. True or false? True, as Sarah vouchsafed. Uh, the Vatican City's currency is the papal pound. True or false? It's false, usual suspects. It's the euro, in actual fact. Yeah, absolutely not the papal pound at all. The 13 sided shape is known as a trisca decagon. True or false? True, in actual fact. And finally, a concertina is a kind of musical instrument. True or false? Yeah, that is true, as you thought, Sarah. Let's have a look at your final board. These six blank spaces need to be filled with subject categories. Here are the final round category options. Starting with pink, running through rock groups, Freud, and on to sneezing with many more in between. Now, neither side was prepared to win a round there, so the two categories that were due to be chosen will now be carried over to the next round, meaning four categories will be on offer then. Usual suspects, time to switch off. We'll see you in round two. Right, they've gone now, so we can have a chat. Pick me two that you will be choosing for yourself when you get the opportunity. Travolta. And? Maybe Ellis Island, because I've been to New York. And two that you really like to avoid. Elections. Right. <laughs> Sneezing. <laughs> yeah. Sounds a bit weird, that one. Yeah. Well, remember, Shell, in order to win the prize fund, you'll need to answer all six correctly, and winning this next round, where there's four categories on offer, could prove very useful indeed. Let's play round two. <laughs> Your 45 seconds start now. Moonlight takes over a day to reach Earth. I'd say that was true. True. Yeah. The birdie song was also called Chirpy Chirpy Cheep Cheep. No, that's false. That was a totally different song. False. The 2014 Giro d'Italia bike race started in Belfast. I wouldn't have thought that was likely, so I'd say that was false. False. And finally, Toulouse-Lautrec was over 100 years old when he died. That could possibly be true. True. And with that, you've answered all four statements. Better? A little bit. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, let's have a chat with the usual suspects and see whether they know what they're talking about. Uh, so here are Shell's four statements and answers. Luke, has she achieved perfection? No, she hasn't. Um, I'm pretty sure A's wrong. Catherine? I would question A. Sarah? I'd question C. That question could potentially be misleading. OK, Shell, the moment of truth. Let's find out how many are correct. <laughs> oh, just one out for you. <laughs> Go in the wrong direction, Shell. <laughs> no. um, you failed to achieve perfection, <laughs> which means the usual suspects have a chance to steal the round if they can find the three answers they need to change. He's definitely wrong, I'm 100%. A, you're 100% yeah. on that. OK, I'm happy to change that. I think the birdie song and Chirpy Chirpy Cheep Cheep are two separate songs. So we're going to change C and D as well. OK. OK, Nick, we'd like to change A from true to false, please. A changes from true to false. C from false to true. C from false to true. And D from true to false. And D from true to false, leaving B as answered by Shelm. All right, usual suspects, let's find out what the correct answers are. Moonlight takes over a day to reach Earth. True or false? Yes, it's false. Well done, Luke. Any idea how long it takes? Well, I know from the sun it takes about eight minutes, so it's much closer, so a few seconds. Yeah, 1.3 seconds, actually. It's that quick from the moon. The birdie song was also called Chirpy Chirpy Cheep Cheep. This is the key one, isn't it? Is that true or false? Yeah, it is false. Very well done, Catherine. Separate songs completely. The 2014 Giro d'Italia bike race started in Belfast. True or false? True. Toulouse-Lautrec was over 100 years old when he died. Is that true or false? Uh, it's false. Congratulations, as usual suspects. You have achieved perfection. 
In fact, he died uh, when he was 36. A short life for a short man. It's, uh, I think you'll find. Let's see the final board. A veritable desert at the moment after no one winning the first round, but because you won the second round, the usual suspects, you get a chance to choose four categories, two from the first round and two from round two. I think it's unlikely Shell's going to know much about elections, so I'm quite tempted to go for that one. Go for that. OK, elections, please. Elections goes in. What about populations? Populations. That'd be good. Yeah, populations, please, Nick. Populations goes in. Freud. I think All right, Freud sticks out at me. Yeah. yeah, that could be pretty obscure. Yes, Freud, please, Nick. <laughs> Freud sticks out at you, Sarah So it's <laughs> Freud in his own right. Let's, let's move it into the final. Next. Ellis Island. I've not heard of Ellis Island. OK, Ellis Island, then, please, Nick. And Ellis Island goes into the final. OK, well played, usual suspects. Time to switch you off. We'll see you in round three. Well, they did your favour there with Ellis Island, cos you were going to pick that anyway. Yeah. Um, uh, but you didn't want elections. Populations and Freud. Mm. No? No. Not really. <laughs> no. Ready to play on? Yes. You need to head in the other direction this time. Yes. Yes? Definitely. All right. Okay, let's play round three. <laughs> Your 45 seconds starts now. Top Gear's Richard Hammond is an ex bus driver. Um, he could well be, but I'll say false for that. False. London is closer to LA than to Cape Town. Um, I've been to LA. I'm just trying to think how many hours. Um, I think that's true. True. Coal is German for black. No, that's false. False. Sch Schwartz is German for black. And finally, marzipan is made from frozen milk. No, I think that's false. False. And with that, you've answered all four statements. It's tough, it's tough, isn't it, when you're like in the, in the moment and having it to make is, snap decisions yeah. like that. Yeah. Um, but you happy with D because you had to make that decision quite quickly. Yes, I think so. Because I know marzipan is, is flavoured with almonds, but whether it comes from frozen milk or not, I don't know. Let's bring back the usual suspects to see whether they can pick any holes in that. Right here are Shell's statements and answers. Usual suspects. Catherine, has she achieved perfection? I don't think she's done too badly, but I'm not sure whether Richard Hammond could have been a bus driver. Luke. I think uh, Shell's done quite well. Um, I'm unsure about C, though. Sarah? I'm unsure about B, because LA is a good distance away. It might actually be farther than you think. The moment of truth, you need to have answered all four statements perfectly to have won the round. Let's see how you've done. <laughs> Congratulations, Shell, you have achieved perfection. Let's go through a bit more detail. Top Gear's Richard Hammond is an ex-bus driver. Well, of course, we know that to be false. He did local radio and a regional TV and then uh, auditioned for Top Gear and got the job and um, uh, has been doing that ever since. London is closer to LA than to Cape Town. True or false? Yeah, of course, it is true. Not a great deal in it, but it is true. Coal is German for black, uh, and you are absolutely right. It is false because Schwarzer is uh, German for black. Coal, by the way, is German for cabbage. Oh, what? Right. Marzipan is made from frozen milk. True or false? Mm. Yes, false. And the main ingredient is, of course, almonds, but mixed with sugar and various other things as well. Well played, Shell. As Thank a result you. of that perfect performance, you've made winning the prize run that little bit easier. Let's have a look at your final board. Um, four subject categories on there chosen by the usual suspects. Because you won round three, you get to choose the last two. OK, I'll go for Travolta. Travolta goes into the final and... And... Board games. And board games. We now know our six final categories. They are elections, populations, Freud, Ellis Island, Travolta and board games. Time to switch off the usual suspects for the last time. Away oh, they go. Well, with them choosing Ellis Island for you, you've got three of your own choices in there, and who knows what comes up with the other three? Yeah. Give me a chance. Okay. Gonna walk away with the money. Fourteen thousand. You said it was your lucky number. Right, so yeah, it is my lucky number. Yeah. Why is fourteen your lucky number? It's my birthday as well, fourteenth. Okay, um, and it's always been lucky. Yeah. Well, this has got to be a sign, hasn't it, Shell? <laughs> Get me walking away with some cash. Start it's planning the nice. wedding. Yep. Time to play the final. <laughs> Shell, this is the all-important final. If you're going to achieve perfection, you could be leaving with a prize fund of fourteen thousand pounds. If you fail, you'll be leaving with nothing. It should be great news for the usual suspects, as one of them could be playing for a rollover of fifteen thousand pounds on the next game. So let's play the final round. <laughs> Shell, here are your final six categories. 
You must answer all six statements correctly if you want to win the £14,000. Think carefully. There's no time limit. But once you've given an answer, your first answer, it will be locked in. Understand? Yep. Let's reveal your first statement. Elections. Over 90% of UK adults voted in the 2010 general election. Is that true or false? I think that's false. I don't think it was that many. False. Populations. More than 200 million people live in Indonesia. It's quite a big, big island, Indonesia. But I... Oh. <laughs> I'm going to say true. True? Yeah. I kind of talked yourself into that one as you were thinking. Yeah. <laughs> Have you been there? No, I haven't been there. Okay. Freud. Sigmund Freud wrote The Interpretation of Dreams. I think that could be true. It's the sort of thing he, he wrote about, wasn't it? Dreams and uh, things like that. So, so you're saying? I'll say true for that. True. Yeah. Ellis Island. Ellis Island was a prison in San Francisco Bay. No, that's false. That's Alcatraz. False. Travolta. Saturday Night Fever was released in the 1970s. That's definitely true, yes. 1976, I think. True. Board games. In the USA, chess is known as Canadian checkers. Um. No, I wouldn't have thought so, because chess, I think, is internationally known and they have games with Russia and, and people like that, so I would have thought that would be known as chess, so I would say that's false. False? Yeah. And with that, you've answered all six statements, and those answers are now locked in. Remember, if there's one single mistake, you go home with nothing. Which ones are you worried about? Um, or aren't you worried about any of them? Indonesia. Um, so you think you've got quite a strong board, then? So, possibly. All right. <laughs> I mean, you never know, but... Yeah. You don't. Let's bring out the usual suspects and see what they think. You can now see the six statements, and next to them are Shell's answers. Shell, your answers are locked in, and you can't change them by yourself. But if you think you may have made a mistake, you can unlock them with the help of the usual suspects. This will, however, come at a cost. Shell, who would you like to hear from first? Um, Luke, please. Hi there, Shell. I'm certain you've got one wrong, um, but I would be willing to come down. For how much? At least 9,000. 9,000 he wants for the one that he one. says that he can see that you've got wrong. Uh, who do you want to hear from? Anybody else? Um, Sarah, please. I also think you've got one wrong. Um, and I'd be willing to help you as well. And how much would you be looking for? £8,000. Slightly undercutting Luke Slightly, there. Slightly, but... yes. Um, yeah. Can I talk to Catherine? Of course you can. Yeah, again, I think you've got one wrong, but I think you've got two good offers there, that, and I'm not, I'm not willing to come down to help. Sorry. Well, that's uh, kind of interesting. So you need to weigh up now. Uh, yes. Are they bluffing you? Are they telling the truth? Or do you want to go alone? What do you think is going on? It's too much. Is it? I think I'll take a chance and go it alone. Really? Do you want to try a counter offer? That's it, is it? Are we done? We're done. We're done. We're done. You actually would like to go it alone? Yeah. Okay, negotiations are over, in which case then, uh, Shell, you've decided to go it alone. £14,000 at stake, six answers away. Let's find out if you've achieved perfection. <laughs> do you think they were bluffing or you just weren't prepared to pay the amounts that they wanted to say? A bit of both. You think it was a bit of both, <laughs> do you? All right, well, it doesn't matter now, so we can actually find out. Sarah, which one did you think was wrong? F. Oh, did you? That's interesting. Uh, Luke? Um, I'm pretty sure C's false. C. Uh, C and F. OK. Well, let's deal with the F one straight away, shall we? And uh, make our way up the board, I think. Yeah, here we go. Uh, in the USA, chess is known as Canadian checkers. Now, you said this was false. This was the one that maybe Sarah thought might, that might be wrong. So, is it true or false? Yes, it is false. Very well done. There is a thing called uh, Canadian checkers. It's a sort of draft, draft variant on a 12 by 12 board. All right, shall we press on? Saturday Night Fever was released in the 1970s. You were actually very confident about this. Yeah. Fan of it, were you? Yes, definitely. So you went for true. Is it true or false? <laughs> true. Very well done. Uh, Ellis Island was a prison in San Francisco Bay. Now, really interestingly, on the subject category, you said you've been to Ellis Island. Ellis Island is where the Statue of, Li Statue of Liberty is. Is that right? The prison on, on San Francisco is Alcatraz. Right, so, so we're not... So you said false <laughs> and you know where this is going to go. I hope uh, so. Is it true or false? <laughs> it 
You're absolutely correct. Very well done on all of those facts. Uh, it helps if you visited these places, doesn't it? It does help, yeah. Sigurd Freud wrote The Interpretation of Dreams. Now, the question is, uh, Luke was offering uh, to come down for a large chunk of money as well, and he thought this might be uh, wrong. He might have changed your mind about this one. You've gone with true. Is it true or false? It is true. <laughs> well, there you go. So you decided not to go with Sarah, which is just a well because of F. You decided not to go with Luke, it's just as well because of C. Right, well, more than 200 million people live in Indonesia. This is the one that worried this, you, isn't it? Yeah. Let's skip over that yeah. for a minute and go and do the <laughs> other one first and come back to that. Um, let's go to A. Over 90% of UK adults voted in the 2010 general election. Now, you think... I think that's too high. Yeah. I think it's generally around 50 to 70, maybe. Right. I just think that's too high. So you said false. If this turns red, you are just one away from the £14,000 all on your own. Is it true or is it false? It's false. <laughs> Nearer to 63% voted. So you were quite right. That was way, way too high. OK, here we go. We end up at B, which is the one that you spent your longest thinking about. This is the one that was difficult, and you actually very nearly said false. I did, yeah. However, you went for true. You did say <gasps> that your lucky number was 14. Let me say that right from the start, lucky number was 14. Uh, you were born on the 14th. Yep. <laughs> 14,000 pounds on offer, and it all rests on this one question that you debated and really, honestly, could have gone either way on. Yeah, yeah, I could have gone. You said this was true you need it to turn green. If it does, you're walking away with £14,000 and the wedding's on. Yep. <laughs> if it turns red, the money rolls over for the usual suspects and they get to play for £15,000 on the next game. More than 200 million people live in Indonesia. Is it true or false for £14,000? Isn't that unbelievable? <laughs> it is. That's Absolutely fantastic. unbelievable. That is extraordinary. Well played you, really well played you. Well, you said 14 was your lucky number. I did. That's kind of spooky, yeah. isn't it? It is very spooky. So I can get married next year now. Is that definitely going to happen, yeah. is it? Oh, yeah, definitely. Usual suspects, I'm afraid it's bad news for you. Uh, the prize fund has been won, which means we reset the total to £1,000 on our next game. But to be fair, she played a great game. Congratulations to Sel. You have achieved you. perfection. So You're walking out of here with £14,000. Happy? Yes, very. <laughs> I'm not at all surprised. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, let's hear it for Shell. That's all we have time for. Please join us next time when our usual suspects have the chance to play again, this time for just £1,000. And remember, on this show, we will pay, but only for absolute perfection, as you've just seen. Goodbye. See you next time.